You probably heard of a stock making 1000% or 10x over many years or even cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ethereum making that kind of outsized gains in even shorter period of time. But I believe you probably have not heard that an ETF could have generated 10x or 1000% in just 15 days. I couldn't believe it in my eyes too until I really dig into it. So today in this video, I'm going to share with you about this ETF that make these exceptional returns and whether it is sustainable. So I'm Alvin, I see your Dr. Wealth. So welcome to the show and welcome to join me on this channel. Please remember to subscribe. And before this video was filmed, I actually covered this in my newsletter, Substack newsletter called FinBikeInsights.com uh, .substack.com I'll leave the link in the comment box and do remember or the description box so that you can conveniently click to it and subscribe to it. All right. So to back to this video and this is exactly the screenshot that you saw um, that I, I, I did it just and this stock or this ETF has gone up 1000% in the past 15 days. In fact, it was listed or started trading on 26 March and on that day itself, the price, the reference price was $4.84 and immediately the day closed at $9. So even on the first day of trading, you will made 100% gain just buying this ETF. And this ETF is not a Bitcoin ETF is not a leverage ETF and you might be surprised because this is the very first time such ETF has been launched and that's probably why there's a lot of demand chasing after just one this ETF and this ETF is known as the Destiny Tech 100 and the ticker is DXYZ okay, so at first I thought Tech 100 sounds like NASDAQ uh, QQQ right that uh, ETF which is already very popular and deliver very great returns for investors but this is even more exceptional <laughs> in the sense that uh, it has 10x in just uh, over that 15 days and the specialty of this ETF is that they are a private equity fund which means that they invest in companies that are yet to be listed so for example um, uh, maybe I'll show you the holdings of this ETF it has like SpaceX it has uh, Epic Games, you have OpenAI and it has Stripe. So some of these very famous names that you probably read about them on a daily basis in the news, in the media, and they are typically not available for investors or retail investors specifically. They are only for high net worth investors who can invest in venture capitalist funds or VC funds. And these are all private entity, right? So they are private uh, funds, they are not traded, and then they invest in private companies like this. So in order for retail investors to invest in this, this uh, Destiny Fund Management have created this ETF to make this fund available to retail investors, which means you can just buy using your normal brokerage. You don't need extra um, checks or you know to make sure that you're an accredited investor or high net worth investor. You can just get a piece of it. And that is the beauty of it. And that's why I think that that is the reason that is so much demand driving up for this ETF and causing the, the price to go up uh, so much in just 15 days. And why do we want to do that? Because we all know that most of the returns of these uh, private enterprises or these uh, unicorn or tech startups are made before the IPO because you get to buy them at a much cheaper price than you could right, uh, in the open market. So for example, this is a table they provided. They give some three examples. At, Airbnb, DoorDash as well as Snowflake. So if you have bought these stocks pre-IPO, you have made like triple digit, right? From at least 198.5% to 307% for Snowflake. And if you buy even at the IPO price, you would have made 147% uh, for Airbnb and 32% uh, for Snowflake, right? So you can see most of the returns is made if you are able to invest in these companies pre-IPO. And IPO is actually and exit for the VC funds. And retail investors unfortunately can only get in when the stock starts trading, not even at IPO subscription price, which means if you do that, you might even lose money because you are at the receiving end of the investment, right? So that's why uh, these ETFs become very popular and uh, over the past 15, years, uh, 15 days, it's gone up that uh, 10x. And this is a table, right, which I blow it up for you to see. And this is a comparison between Tech 100, a typical VC fund, as well as uh, ETF, right, an index ETF. So the advantage of this Tech 100, as we already said, is uh, 
trade on exchange and you can use your brokerage to buy and sell it easily not like a VC fund a VC fund you will need to engage their uh, admin or the fund operator in order for you to buy and sell uh, the units of this fund and for the investor limitation for VC fund typically you has to be you have to be a high net worth or accredited investor otherwise you won't be able to invest and the minimum pop can be 200,000 and not like uh, buying ETF is very affordable you can just buy uh, one unit or even sub unit because now uh, fractional shares are available on the US market so there's no minimum investment and it's very convenient for Tech 100 and the difference between Tech 100 and the, the normal ETF like a uh, S&P 500 ETF is that Tech 100 will invest in private equity private companies and the ETF for the SPI ETF will invest in public companies which you can buy them individually if you want to as well right but for the Tech 100 companies that they are uh, holding you can't just buy and sell as you wish okay so you do need to be qualified and typically the bigger unicorns will go for institution money rather than individuals and uh, portfolio management so tech 100 is active vc5 is active etf is passive and in terms of valuation because it's private equity hence it cannot be valued on a daily basis not like a public listed uh, equity you can have the closing prices every day hence the ETF will have an NAV every day like SPY will have an NAV every day but for Tech 100 the valuation is only done on a money basis in terms of fees uh, the Tech 100 is 2.5 percent and to most investors they will see that oh that's very expensive compared to uh, S&P 500 is less than 1 percent so uh, less than 0.1 percent even so it's very cheap right but you have to understand that at the end of the day because these are less accessible in companies and you do need an investment team so you do have a higher cost of running this uh, tech 100 etf and that's why i believe that the management fee is higher and also comparing to a vc fund that is pretty the norm okay two plus percent is the norm and they do not have a performance fee in this case for tech 100 etf while a vc fund may have a 20 percent performance fee on top of the 2% management fee so you can see the tech 100 ETF um, is like an in-between between the VC fund and the ETF a typical ETF and um, that's the biggest draw is definitely the big gains that can come if eventually some of these holdings go for IPO okay so that is the uh, main value proposition and let's look at the valuation right because for ETF to go up 10x or 1000% in 15 days it looks like excessive is it overvalued and the old, old, the the key thing about uh, looking at funds or ETFs is that you want to compare it to the net asset value right the net asset value is the underlying investment that the fund have and for this uh, Destiny Deck 100 ETF it is a closed end fund which means it doesn't get in more money from investors and buy more companies uh, to enlarge the portfolio so which means whatever shares that's being listed already that's all you're gonna get right and that means that investors are just buying and selling these ETF units with one another there is no new units being created so the NAV doesn't expand okay the NAV only expand or increase or decrease depends on the underlying investments if the underlying investments get valued higher the NAV or the fund will increase and if the underlying uh, investments get valued lower then the NAV will decrease so based on their 31st December 2023 NAV per share it was $4.84 okay so in short uh, that is what I wanted to screenshot and show you so if the NAV is at $4.84 and in fact it's actually lower because after the IPO they created more shares they, gener uh, the, they issued more shares about 1 million plus more shares and that means that the NAV per share if I discount the new shares being created is at $4.27 provided the valuation of the underlying companies do not increase right or decrease so compared to the share price of $99.79 the the ETF is trading at 23 times of its NAV it's very very excessive right so I would definitely not go in at this point in time um, even though no matter how um, you know uh, how good or how accessible this will be to private equity okay and okay I did mention that uh, this destiny uh, tech 100 is a closed end fund and some of the things that I mentioned have already been uh, uh, repeated here so I'll not repeat them again and basically what i'm trying to say is that there is a lot of hype right it's really a greater fool's theory whoever is willing to pay a higher price and we don't know how this will end and likely the price may go higher because there's just fixed supply 
but the demand keeps piling in. As you watch this video, maybe it's the first time you hear about it. I believe that there will be more first timers hearing about it and some of them may continue to buy into this ETF causing the price to surge some more. But there will be a point where there's no more buyers and the price will start to collapse. So I think that uh, now is not a good time to enter this at such a high valuation. Right? It's pretty late in the game. Um, and uh, you do, even if you're interested, I do think that it's better to wait for the price to collapse and stabilize at, uh, even if it trades a premium, maybe 1.5 times the NAV, I think it's fine. As long as the market has realized that, okay, this is the stable premium that uh, market is willing to pay for, I think that's probably the better time to get in. Right? You do need to wait for the dust to settle. It's too uh, late to enter right now and it's too risky to enter right now as well. So I hope this will give you some idea about this new ETF and I believe more will come of the same nature, right? And uh, this is also quite shocking because you never know that even an ETF can go up so much in a short time. So hopefully uh, you are able to catch the similar ETF in the next time and get that outsized gain in a short period of time, right? Who doesn't love that? So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to the Substack Finbyte insights.substack.com. I'll see you around. Thank you and goodbye.